Tony owns a small bank and Alice wants to buy a home but can't afford to pay for it up front, so she heads over to Tony's bank to get a mortgage. Tony analyzes her financial situation carefully, knowing that if he gives Alice the loan, a very long-term relationship will be established which revolves around Alice making payments to Tony's bank over a period of many years. This is what we could call a traditional banking relationship and as can be seen, Tony has all of the reasons in the world to think twice before lending Alice money. Nowadays, we also have Bill, who is a modern-day banker, and Dave, who wants to buy a home and needs a mortgage, just like Alice. As far as Dave is concerned, the process is similar, with him heading over to Bill's bank and asking for a loan. Unlike the previous banker, Tony, however, Bill isn't as worried about the relationship with Dave and is willing to ignore many of his problems. Why? Well, unlike Tony, Bill doesn't have as much skin in the game because 1. He gives Dave the loan. 2. He then sells Dave's loan to an investment bank and receives a bunch of money. 3. The investment bank takes Dave's loan as well as several other loans and creates a package called Mortgage Backed Security or MBS. And 4. The investment bank then sells the mortgage backed security to investors and receives a bunch of money. In the end, it's those investors who end up taking on risk and being rewarded if people keep paying their mortgages. The elephant in the room in terms of problems is represented by the moral hazard dimension, as the Great Recession made clear, because Bill's bank and the investment bank simply sell the loans, get paid, and move on. The more loans they sell, the more money they make, and if things go wrong, investors pay the price. As such, who is likely to be more prudent, Tony or Bill?